Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. It's almost three o'clock on Christmas Eve. It's raining cats and cats and dogs. It is raining like crazy. No snow, cats and dogs. And I've been out today. I've uh, uh, doing last minute Christmas shopping and things. I got got something really good for Michael that he will definitely, definitely, I know he will love, um, and he will definitely be able to use. He definitely be able to use. And um, my wife is really a hard person to shop for, and she always says, "Well, I don't need anything, but what I want you to do is fix some stuff at the house." And she's a stickler, stickler. For, for every little detail. So uh, what I'm going to get her is the gift that keeps on giving, which is me. And that is me going through and just letting her point out every little little speck that she sees where, where it needs a little drop of paint on it or, you know, the, so literally, literally. You know, I should have known what I was in, in store for. I, I, I should have learned back in college. See, I, I actually fell for my wife back in college. Um, I saw her and I saw, just thought she was the most incredible woman in the world. And um, I was known as Crazy Mark. Some things never change. <laughs> and she was like, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't happening. Sorry, you're Crazy Mark, not going to. But her and I became really, really good friends. And I can't remember what the bet was, but we had this bet and I lost. I lost, and the, the, the winner would get slave for a day. <laughs> you know, I was a college guy, you know, you think it's slave for a day, hey! You know, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking. She won the bet, and literally, I was slave for a day. She had me cleaning like every, I mean, I was cleaning. I was down on my hands and knees. and I mean, it was like, you know, toothbrush. Clean. I mean, I was just, and I was started getting mad about this. I was like, okay, this was just like a fun joke, slave for a day, you know? It's not really a slave, no, she, it was a slave. And I should have known then that, that it's still slavery today. But anyway. Uh, update on the Cowboys. I told you the Cowboys won't have any wood this weekend. Uh, Xavier Woods, as well as Antoine Woods, are both you know out and doesn't look like they're going to play. Um, we also know that Van Der Esch isn't going to play, but uh, Zach Martin and Zeke Elliott were doing you know working with bands on the side with the trainers and things. Zeke Elliott um, is gonna, is limited. He's limited. I, I'm still mystified and trying to understand why we're trying to push it so hard but you know uh, for me I would just say Zeke this year is just not the year for you shut it down shut 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 it down let's get you healthy for next year which brings me to my next point you know a lot of people out there keep saying tank 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 and I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you I don't know any times that that's actually worked. The teams have just gone through and said, you know what, we're just going to throw away the season, get some great draft picks, and then they go on to win Super Bowl. It seems like most of the teams that are in there drafting up early are teams that are just really bad. It seems like they continue to be bad. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm delusional. I'm trying to spin it. I don't know. But to me, I look back at history. I look back at things that have happened, and that's where I get a lot of the stuff that I talk about. If we go back in history of Mike McCarthy with the Green Bay Packers, that first year didn't start off really well for them. In fact, they ended up 8-8. Eight and eight. And I, I want to say, I, I should have double-checked my numbers, but I want to say the first half of the season was awful. But they finished up at 8-8 eight and eight and had a little bit of momentum. The next year, they were 13-3. I'll give you another example. And I know what's going to happen because I use this team a lot for my examples. And they're going to say, see, he's not really a Cowboy fan. Okay. The reason I can say it is because I lived through it. Okay. When I went to high school, I went to high school with the defensive coordinator, Richie Pettibone. 
um, his kids. His daughter was a cheerleader. Richie, his uh, Richie Jr. actually played football at the University of Maryland. We played football together at, Mad at Madison High School. And crosstown rivals were Joe Gibbs. J.D. Gibbs was the quarterback of Oakton, Oakton High School. Our crosstown rivals. So I was going through this, and this is why it's here, because I hated the Washington football team, because they were good. And this was the tail end of the Dallas Cowboys. But when Joe Gibbs took over for Pat, um, what was his name? Pardee. Jack Pardee. No, Jack Pardee. Yeah, Jack Pardee, I think it was. It was a disaster. Joe Gibbs took over the team, and they started out 0-5. People wanted his head. This is the dumbest hire in the world because they brought him, who was an offensive coordinator for uh, the Chargers. And they're like, this guy, he doesn't have it. He stinks. He's terrible. But if I remember correctly, they ended up 8-8. Eight and eight. They turned it around. The season started out terrible. It was atrocious. It was 0-5. He changed what he was doing because he realized he couldn't do that same thing they were doing in, with the Chargers, Air Coriel. And he came up with the one-back offense. And he finished up that season with momentum and then ended up being one of the teams of the 80s. So there's a lot to be said for starting off poorly and turning things around. And when we look at Mike McCarthy, like I was saying, Mike McCarthy was 8-8 eight eight his first year with the Green Bay Packers. This year being the year that it is, where literally you didn't have an offseason and an opportunity to really coach up and do what you wanted to, they relied on basically everything that was there on offense from before, coaching, play calling, everything, and didn't really put anything new in defense they tried to go ahead and start all over and it ended up being a disaster because nobody really got you know learning the system that they wanted to implement so I'm hoping excuse me I'm hoping that this is a case of deja vu that Mike McCarthy the first year is just bad um you think of Mike McCarthy actually having this year makes next year easier. Because had they, you know, if the Cowboys are, you know, playoff team, we have everybody that's there and, you know, we disappoint in the playoffs because we don't have the, quite the horses and stuff, you win the division, you got the first place schedule. I know to be the best, you need to beat the best, but one thing that New England had done forever was having a weak-ass division, which that meant they had a weak schedule. They weren't playing anybody. They could stay healthy. They knew that they're just better. We can play it for the playoffs instead of having to be battle-tested and fighting to the death you know, every single week against great teams. And the NFC East does not have repeat champions. So when you start thinking about next year, the schedule that we have, we're going to be playing the NFC South. Um, is Tom Brady coming back for Tampa Bay? I don't know. New Orleans, they'll have a great defense, but is Drew Brees coming back and will it matter for next year? Carolina? Atlanta? Dudes. And we play the AFC West. Yeah, Kansas City will be a beast, but Denver? Are you scared of the Raiders? Um, who am I missing? Kansas City, Raiders, Denver. Oh, Chargers. Are you scared of the Chargers? So next year, we got a, a cake schedule because we got the NFC East too. And we'll probably play like the 49ers and like the Lions. It's potentially that you've got three teams that have had a winning record this year that you're playing next year. Kansas City, New Orleans, Tampa, Raiders, four teams. That could be potentially what happens, that we play four teams with a winning record next year. So you got that going for you. You could have a top 10 draft pick along with having 10 total picks in the draft. You'll be able to get some more talent. 
you have some cap space if you do the Dak Prescott deal and get it done early on a depressed market where a lot of teams are going to have to gut the roster because they're so far over. You look at uh, the Saints, the Eagles, Atlanta. These are teams, that are the Rams, that are over the salary cap and are going to have to get rid of scout. They're going to have to dump players just to get down to zero. And because the salary cap is not raising up, there may not be that much money to sign other guys. So it may be a depressed market where you can get some guys on the cheap. So I look at the potential of Mike McCarthy for next year of going from worst to first as a pretty good situation. So we'll see what happens on that one. But let me get this stuff in here and uh, do some work down in the man cave. All right. Happy uh, Christmas Eve.